it's Adam here for PC Monitors and today I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the ASUS PB279Q. The menu system is controlled by clicky buttons on the rear of the bottom bezel and you can see that um, once you press a button everything's labelled up quite nicely so you know what everything does and there are also little blobs painted onto the, the front of the bezel so you you know about uh, sort of the spacing of the buttons and you can actually you can sort of feel your way around the uh, the blobs aren't illuminated in any way so if it is a dark room um, fortunately ASUS have spaced everything out quite nicely and the on-screen guide is quite useful as well so you know what everything everything does and um, one thing I found a, a little bit or still find a little bit counterintuitive is that the um, you can see there S, which stands for Splendid. That's actually the first um, button function, Splendid mode, but it appears last on this little uh, this little menu system here rather than first, which I find a bit odd. Um, and you also notice that the the quick menu here disappears very quickly. That's despite the fact I've got the OSD timeout period um, set to as high as it will go for the main menu. So you can't actually uh, stop that happening, and you have to be quite quick when you're uh, navigating through this system. But of course, once you're used to it, um, it's not really a problem. But uh, for actually videoing this, it's, uh, it's a bit of a pain, to be honest. So I'll, I'll just quite quickly go through this. So the first button there, S, Splendid, as I've already said, allows you to select one of the Splendid presets. Um, you can very quickly cycle through them. You can see it activates each Splendid preset very quickly. Second button there has a little brightness icon, um, and that's because it can allows you to quickly change the brightness of the screen. Third button along is simply an exit button. And fourth button along, input select, allows you to select a source, which isn't required for me because I've only got one PC um, connected to the monitor at the moment via DisplayPort. Next you've got this little grid icon there, which is Quick Fit, uh, or Quick Fit Virtual Scale, which is an ASUS specific feature. And that allows you to put an alignment grid or a specific paper size grid on the screen. Um, so basically it gives you on-screen guidelines. So for example, if I select A4, it'll show you um, how big a, an A4 piece of paper would be, which is useful for sort of working out the, the real size of documents you're working on. And finally, there's Menu which allows you to go into the main OSD menu of the monitor. Now I'm just going to um, I'm just going to reduce the brightness a little bit because otherwise the menu system is going to be a bit bleached out and you won't be able to see it properly on the video. So again the first the first function there is splendid it just allows you to select a splendid mode. Next there's color which allows you to change things like the the brightness, the contrast, saturation, colour temperature and skin tone. Um, you can see that saturation is actually greyed out and so is skin tone. Um, that's because certain features are only available on certain Splendid presets and specific features that are available on specific presets are mentioned in the calibration section of the review. The colour temperature um, function does exactly what it says on the tin. It's set to user mode by default, um, which allows you to configure the red, green, and blue color channels manually. They're set to 100 by default, but I've uh, lowered them slightly as per the test settings of the review. You can also, if you prefer, select one of the presets, for example, warm, normal, or cool. Next there's the image menu and that allows you to change things like the sharpness of the monitor and the aspect control. Um, you can see again that some things are greyed out, that's because they're not available in the specific preset mode that I'm using here. But the, the trace free is the 
pixel overdrive feature of the monitor, the greater grey acceleration, so you can control how much greater grey acceleration the monitor is using, and you can set that anywhere between 0 and 100 in increments of 20, so that's quite good flexibility ASUS gives you there. There's also a vivid pixel feature, which basically enhances the uh, increases the sharpness and slightly boosts the saturation of the image. That's actually set to 25 by default. There's actually very little difference between 0 and 25, so you can increase that in increments of 25 between 0 and 100. Um, not sure if you can see on the video there, but I've got it set to 100 now. Um, things look ridiculously sharp, not in a good way. They look very artificial. Um, and this isn't really a feature I like to use at all. I like to keep that off. But the default value of 25 is alright as well. ASCR, which is greyed out, is ASUS Smart Contrast Ratio. And that's the dynamic contrast function of the monitor. And that's explored in the review. And if I quickly change this to a non-native resolution so it's running at 3840 by 2160 at the moment which is UHD the native resolution of the monitor I believe if I decrease this so I'm running at full HD now I should have as aspect ratio control options he says yeah there we go so you can see the options there are full, 4x3, 1 to 1, so that's a 1, one to 1 pixel mapping feature, or overscan. And some of them are greyed out, probably because I'm using a 16 by 9 aspect ratio anyway. But if I select 1 to 1, you can see that the, the image just fills 1920 by 1080 pixels, which given the native resolution is basically a quarter of the, the screen real estate used there so you have um, a very small section of the screen used and that's something that is mentioned in the interpolation section of the review and before I go completely crazy I'm just gonna set it back to the native resolution of the monitor there we go Next is the sound menu, which simply allows you to adjust the volume, mute the speakers, or change the sound source used for the monitor. So it has simple 2 watt stereo speakers built into it. Um, there are a few notes I've given on the in the features and aesthetics section of the review on those. They're just fairly simple. They do their job. They're not fantastic quality. Um, I have absolutely no idea what any of this means. Very interesting. Maybe someone else can enlighten me. As you can tell, I'm not really a sound person. I'm more into the visuals of the monitor. There's picture in picture, picture by picture settings. This monitor has fairly comprehensive picture-in-picture and picture-by-picture modes um, you can see them here you can actually have picture-by-picture picture with up to four sources so you can simultaneously have four things connected to the monitor and have them display at the same time which is quite neat I've only got one thing connected at the moment so I'm not going to be able to show you all of those unfortunately Next there's input select, which again allows you to select the input of the monitor. In my case display port, because that's all there is connected. Next is the system setup menu, and that allows you to control a range of other options. There's a splendid demo mode, and what that does is it shows you a split screen with one of the sort of full-on splendid presets on one side of the screen, and one of the more subdued sort of normal or splendid modes on the other side of the screen. 
just to show off some of the uh, crazy sort of splendid effects you've got going there. There's the Game Plus feature, and that's something that's found on various ASUS monitors now. Um, and that's an on screen crosshair and on screen timer function, and they call it practice mode. So you've got four different crosshairs to choose from, and they've all got fairly eccentric designs. Um, personally, I'd prefer something a bit simpler, just a little dot in the middle of the screen or just a little cross, and I know some other people would agree, but for some reason, as you choose these uh, quite large flashy designs here. There's also an on-screen timer and that gives you a countdown in minutes. So you can have 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 50 minutes, 60 or 90. So if you activate that, you can also select the position it's displayed on the screen. So you can have the top left, the left central region or the bottom left. And you can see there that the timer, it's uh, sort of kind of faded, semi-transparent thing there, so it's not massively distracting when you're playing the game, but it does at least remind you of the, um, the time, how long you've been playing for. And of course in some games it's uh, sort of a, a tactical thing to know how long you've been doing something for. Not a feature I personally use, but it's nice to have it there anyway. And next up there is Eco Mode, and all that does is it lowers the brightness of the screen to reduce the energy consumption, and that actually, regardless of the splendid mode you're in, it'll knock off the brightness control, so you can't manually adjust the brightness. There's also a separate sub-menu here, OSD Setup, and that allows you to change things like the OSD Timeout. Um, that applies to the main menu. It doesn't apply to the quick menu, as I showed you before. There's DDC slash CI functionality, the plug and play functionality of the monitor. You should just leave that on. And you can set the transparency of the OSD. So you can have it completely opaque if you prefer, or you can have it even more transparent, practically invisible in this setting. I'm quite happy with the default of 20 myself. There's display, display port stream, and by default, this is actually set to DP 1.1, and that's simply for compa um, compatibility reasons, because Systems that support DP 1.2 will also support DP 1.1. Backwards compatibility is an important feature of DisplayPort, whereas not all systems do support DP 1.2. So one thing I mentioned in the calibration section of the review is if you do have a graphics card with DP 1.2, you will want to select that in the DisplayPort Stream option. And that, you can see there I've got DP 1.1 and um, it's running at the native resolution but it's limited to 30 hertz so if you want 60 hertz you'll have to select dp 1.2 and there you go 60 hertz there's also a language feature which allows you to simply change the language of the OSD. There are quite a few to choose from there. I'm not going to read out exactly what they are. can't pronounce half of them. And there is more, which just reminds you that there's a, another page with some further options if you scroll down. So there's information, which just allows you to see some simple information about the current operating mode. So it's using DisplayPort, it's running at the native resolution at 60Hz vertical refresh rate, and it is the ASUS PB279Q. 
you can turn off the power indicator when the monitor's on if you prefer. Um, the power light's just this little white thing here when the monitor's on. It goes around the bottom of the monitor there. It's not really very distracting at all, it's quite small, it's not overly bright, it doesn't really get in the way, but some people do prefer to have that off when the monitor's on, so you've got that option there. There's also the option to lock the power key so someone can't turn off the monitor if you don't want them to. And you can reset everything to the factory defaults with the all reset option. Last but not least, there's shortcut 1 and shortcut 2 in the shortcut menu. And this was something I alluded to earlier. The first two buttons when you press them on your own, when on their own and you're not in any other menu, they're shortcut keys. So one of them is brightness by default, but you can change it so it's splendid mode, contrast, picture in picture, picture by picture, color temperature, volume, or game plus. The same for shortcut two. So for example, if I change that from splendid to game plus, if game plus is a feature you quite like to use often, but you don't tend to change the splendid mode so much, the quick the quick menu now has a little game plus function on it instead which allows you to quickly activate the on-screen crosshair and timer so there you have it that's the OSD on-screen display menu system of the ASUS PB279Q be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info